Well, we're on a little bit of an early morning stroll. And uh, well, guess what? The children have come along to see the sun come up. And Chance took three pins, one there and one at the front and one over there. Yeah, so I've got to pick up yet another bag of poo. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chance. <laughs> anyway, early to rise this morning and uh, an early brew day. Hey, kids. No. Oh, look at that for a scenic view. It's lovely out here, isn't it? <laughs> Chancy boy. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And the sun's almost up over the hills. There we go folks, it's just coming up 10 past 8 on a lovely Wednesday morning. We've had a good start to the morning actually. And this little nutcase is definitely in the mood for a play today. He really is. Anyway, you can hear in the background we've got the boil kettle just going through a bit of a CIP process at the minute. I'm going to start the recirc on the other tank for the nitrous in and this one here. Everything seems to be fermenting away quite happily. These tanks are performing really rather well. This one's dropped a touch. As you can see, it's dropped a degree. But uh, this one with the proof of concept is fermenting away merrily. And today we're going to start brewing uh, a batch of the best bitter. Oh, and I almost forgot. I definitely need to install a heating blanket for these small fermenters. They just don't seem to have the thermal mass to maintain their temperature. So unfortunately, this one's now dropped to 15.8, 15.9, and I've had to wrap it up in a jacket. Maybe getting it off this cold stainless steel table might help. I wonder if we've got a bit of insulating foam that we can sit this on. So I've managed to get a bit of this king span, what we actually used to insulate the cellar in the old brew shed. Of course, we've taken all that out now. And I thought, well, perfect really, for making something, move this drill, making something to insulate the bottom of these fermenters. So we'll push this into the corner. You see the good thing about this Kingspan is pretty good under compression. So if I just get a pen, I always open the wrong drawer for that as well. Okay, a green marker. We'll just scribe around the bottom of the tanky pool. There we are. Can we get a bit close around here. Beautiful. And then it's just a case of maybe using this or maybe I'd be better off with a blade that will go all the way through, we shall see. So this is the one inch thick stuff. They do a thicker one but I think it would be a bit overkill for what we need. Oh, that seems to have come off all right, actually. 
as long as I can see where I'm going underneath, then we should be able to do this with a Stanley blade. Oh, beautiful. That's working a treat. Going all the way through. Right, take the bucket off, zoom the camera out. I have to be pretty quick with this because I still have the mash tun filling up in the background, so you guys know what I'm like. Always like to dive into another job while something else is happening. I can't help myself. That should push out actually. Oh, beautiful. So that's worked a treat. And then what I was planning to do is get a bit of this gaffer tape, open up the roll, and hopefully, sometimes you just have to blow blow the dust off the edges otherwise the tape won't stick because I have done this before so let's give it a go and this is really just to seal the edges of this foam more than anything let's try that seems to work okay. Just put in a bit of tension on the tape and it's naturally folding over the edges. Almost makes it look like I uh, know what I'm doing here doesn't it? So, like I said, a bit of tension. and then we'll have a good solid overlap. Wonderful, there we go. In just a few seconds time, we've actually made a super lightweight pizza base. <laughs> and this can sit under that fermenter, hopefully keeping it off the cold stainless steel table while we use it. All I'll have to do is just remember to slide it in before we put the fermenter on and when we're finished it can just sit on the top of the fermenting bucket or whatever if we need to clean the table and uh, wow what an easy cheap solution that turned out to be. You know there really is nothing quite like the smell of a mash in the morning. Oh god with life in your bones, I'm telling you. It's wonderful. Best part of the job, this. Best part of the job. So we're just uh, getting the mash temperature stabilised. Shouldn't take a minute. And then once I've sorted this, we'll stick the uh, insulating film under that fermenter. That'll be fun. Picking up 40 litres of brew on my own. <laughs> a disaster waiting to happen, I know it is. Right, this is a little hot. We'll just pop a bit of cold water in, and then we should be good. Okie dokie, folky. So I've been in town while the mash was on, and I've picked up a single blanket, heated under blanket for a single bed should I say. So what I thought I'd do with this is, well I was contemplating how we're going to plug it into the system but you know what quite frankly I think all I'm going to do is have these plugs just wired in hard anyway and uh, 
just have this section poking out and then I can plug into the blanket or take away the blanket when I need to and these can just be kind of stowed away on one side and uh, that's a good enough connector to use over here anyway so kind of killing two birds with one stone there so let me get this mucky old jacket off taken us up to 16 degrees anyway we were down to 15 something last night which was no good realistically so first things first we're going to stow away this cable because that belongs to that one and then what we're going to do is insert our spacer insulator oh. Yeah, I thought this might happen. So let's pull forwards a bit. Then we're going to lift him up and on. And then we'll kind of just drag it on a bit at a time. Ah. Come on, you know you can do it. Ah, my cow. We've got him on, look. That wasn't a problem, really. Make sure there's no stress or tension on there. That means the tilt's going to play up a little bit with the reading. So, with regards to the blanket, we want the connector top and out, really. So I'm thinking we just wrap this around like so. And it does actually come with bits of string attached but it's not really designed for this application is it so well, I don't know whether it's going to work or not maybe I want that that side I'm not sure now yeah the string is in the wrong position as you can see I'm kind of thinking out loud here so I might just take this piece of string and cut it off and stitch it to the top because I don't want the whole blanket upside down you see because if there's any moisture on the deck then that means that that's where the connector is going to be closest to the moisture which is really what I'd like to try and avoid if possible well, mind you saying that it might work it might work folks at least we can get to the tap and whatever else then We'll just tie these two cables together. Let's just go for it. And uh, well, we'll see how it works. So this one, I'm just gonna go and tie a loop in the end. And then this one, we'll wrap it around the tank. And then we'll go through said loop and just pop a bit of a slip knot on there and I think that will be sufficient to hold it to do something on the bottom as well just to hold it together maybe bungees is the answer I'll tell you what let me get my screwdriver we'll wire it into the box and then we'll come back and have a look, see if it's actually working. Right, we've got a wired in. So you can see we've got the cable coming up through this cable gland here. And uh, the whole panel is live, by the way, so just pay attention to that. And then, of course, we've got the uh, connector just here. So this should actually be powered on now. So what I want to do is close the panel, as much as we can anyway. And then I want to plug this into the blanket, which is down here. We managed to get some bungee straps, some bits of string to connect it all together. That's worked nicely. Right, we're in. I'm going to turn this on to three, and we've got the light on. And then I'm just going to turn around and grab hold of 
an amp clamp and we're just going to fish around and go on there and that's reading 180 milliamps so it's definitely on but it's not a lot of power but hopefully it's just enough background heat to bring the temperature of this thing up so as you can see there it's reading 15.9 on the control panel it's just jumped up to 16 maybe that's a sign of things to come and it is actually going to start to heat the plumb porter up we wouldn't want to have a uh, stalled fermentation now on the first batch of plum porter and while we're here I shouldn't really but I think I'm just gonna go and have a sneak peek into the fermenter do you want to have a look come on then let's have a look what's happening oh yes well you could say we are at high Krausen. let me take you off the tripod let me take you off the tripod, give you a peek in there. Definitely at high Krausen at the moment. So she's fermenting nicely, even though the temperature is a little bit on the low side. And as you can hear, we don't need a blow off valve because air is escaping around the side of the fermenter as it is anyway beautiful so I've just got to close this control panel back up safely and stow this somewhere and then we're I think we're good to go and I can continue with the brew day which is happening over yonder as you can see by the steam emanating from the mash tun people oh, I'll tell you what it's been a really good day today and it's actually just getting better and better and I'll tell you why so we've just brewed another batch of the bacon uh, the best bitter and that's gone into tank uh, four five six and uh, we've dropped in the tilt so one two three and the plum porter four tilt hydrometers in solution at the moment as you can see the blanket has worked perfectly 
the temperature is back up to 18.5 it's flawless folks it's flawless and at the same time uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero was delivered today if you don't know what one is Google it I'm sure you do but saying that I didn't until a few weeks ago and uh, well here it is look up there don't worry I'm not gonna leave it in such a vulnerable state I'm gonna put it in something but that Raspberry Pi is plugged in across there on that power supply and the reason it's up high is because it's picking up the signal for all of the tilt hydrometers so I can get rid of the Galaxy tablet so I've set it up it was easy to do uh, let me go upstairs and we'll talk about it a little bit more I'm a bit out of breath actually running around emptying that mash tun okay so here we are in the orifice and in front of the computer screen again where I've just ordered some electronics and Bosch Pi sending tilt data to the computer here you can see this is the tilt black for the plum porter we're down to 1025 already 17.8 on the inside of the tank 18.5 on the outside so I think we've got a pretty good it's less than a degree kind of difference which is pretty pretty good if you ask me and then uh, coming across here to the tilt pi this is uh, obviously on the Wi-Fi network so what I've managed to do is log in to the um, IP address of the tilt which is hung up over there and the Bluetooth signal is powerful enough for it to capture all of the tilts in all of the tanks so if I add another four tilts which I absolutely intend to do because this is awesome then what we'll be doing is charting all eight tanks and their gravities and temperatures from this screen now the plan was to put this television on the wall outside and have that heads up display outside but as you can see the TV is a bit ancient and it supports HDMI, SCART or obviously an aerial so I'm thinking what we do is we have another Pi maybe microcomputer style it on there and we have it plugged into the HDMI and that browsers to this IP address because it'll be on the same Wi-Fi network and it'll be able to display this all the time but I can come up here on the computer obviously and I can change the parameters for everything else I think that's pretty damn cool it was so easy to set up this tilt was and uh, I had some reservations, I had some serious reservations but as you can see it's working perfectly Guile 58, 59, 60 and we've got Guile 63 here because that recipe was put on today got another two brews to do this week still but we've run out of tilt pies unfortunately tilt hydrometers should I say but I'm really pleased with it so what I'm going to go and do now is uh, shoot outside get maybe just like a a takeaway container and put that Raspberry Pi inside it to keep any water or dust off it and then just uh, basically screw it screw it to the wall outside you can see through the window maybe you can't but yeah I'm just gonna screw it screw it up over there and leave it to do all the monitoring for me well there we go folks I've been up and sorted it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this here to continue to log the data 
because these three tilts have already started a sheet on the cloud but of course the purple one hasn't so uh, that is now being logged through the pie and as you can see it's in a nice little enclosure it's still picking up all the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth signal from all of these tilts and everything seems to be working perfectly so all it leaves me to do today is uh, wrap up for the day and go home it's been very very productive indeed so we'll start we'll <laughs> so we'll finish as we started with Chancey's little face rattle the keys come on then bud you know straight away come on dad I want to go home anyway folks cheers we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog mm -hmm.